Now, uh, one thing that we were chatting about before we actually um, <laughs> started recording today, I, I think it was Vincent mentioned it, was that uh, it, the, the likelihood is that we're going to be wanting to use more than one cloud, aren't we? There's not going to be a cloud, in fact. I mean, we use this term, but, you know, there's going to be private clouds, isn't there, and, and specialised clouds and so on and so forth. Um, enterprises and users are going to want to interact with those clouds in different ways, with different levels of security. I just wonder what, whether you have any thoughts on how that can be managed even, because there doesn't seem to be any... Um, it, will, will the standards that are being discussed cover that kind of issue? I suppose that's what I'm asking here, really. Or is there actually more considerations to be taken into account? Well, you need glue, don't you? And I mean, this week is uh, today, the GlueCon starts, I think. Yes. So, you know, there is a conference about this very issue mm. going on right now. One, one so, one. Yeah, well, well, and OSCON as well are going <laughs> to talk about it today. So, you know, there are, there, are, there, are, there are lots of people, lots of clever people thinking about this very issue. Mm. And the more interchangeable, the more innovation we'll get within the clouds because the more competition we'll see and the better, better it will be for consumers and the enterprise. So that is a big challenge because mm. obviously vendors want to innovate, which means they can't use standards because standards set in, set in stone. I think APIs have had a you know, massive impact on this. If you, you can version your APIs so you can, you can continue iterate and yet still innovate. Mm. Um, and then you're going to need to use providers like Boomi um, and Castine, who've just been acquired by IBM, to, to glue the clouds together. Because today, not all of them glue themselves very well. So there are going to be some clouds where you can glue, have pre-integrated stacks. So Salesforce, too, they're on their app exchange. They've got a brilliant set of integration with almost anything. But if, you, if you're, for example, your app doesn't integrate with the other app, then you can use glue. So there's lots of exciting development. There's lots of exciting developments, I agree, and uh, I'm involved in, in some of them. I, I work with the uh, Storage Networking Industri Industry Associations to develop the uh, CDMI standard, Cloud Data Management Interface. It's an exciting first step towards the kind of things that you're talking about, you know, the ability to, to move data from A to B, from provider A to provider B, you know, uh, understanding how data is managed, you know, uh, you, you, you will be capable to query the provider to understand its capabilities and so on. So there's plenty of things that are interesting around the corner. But having been involved in all, all the standards project, um, I have also to be extremely cautious about what I'm saying regarding, regarding the, the promises around standards. I think whether it's a de jure or de facto standard you know, uh, that we introduce, we've got to be seen whether or not uh, players that are involved in the overall end-to-end -end cloud stacks are using the standards and are, and are making use of it for the benefit of, of, the, of, the, of the service users. Because in so many cases in the IT industry, there is a standard that nobody touched on or, or the application are not using it. Or, you know, it's, so do we want to wait for a standard to become reality in order to successfully deploy cloud services? The answer is no, we can't. Mm. You know, we'll be missing the boat. <laughs> you know? mm. uh, but do we want to try to take the industry towards a standardization path that makes sense at the end of the day for both, it, in a win-win kind of situation for both the provider and the consumer? Yes, uh, de de definitely. It's not going to happen. Another uh, set of technology that is important in that space is also uh, development libraries, because very often when we talk about uh, uh, cloud, we talk about the providers, we talk about the users, the, the service uh, consumers, uh, but we don't talk about the people developing <laughs> for the cloud. So that's specific to the platform as a service? Type platform. Side platform or, or software or even infrastructure, you know, depending on the, the level of resource you share. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those APIs and those libraries helping to develop those APIs are very important. And I cannot stop thinking that, and as it's already happening, that some vendors will join forces to propose a com kind of cloud, preferred cloud ecosystem, you know, mm -hmm. where things are going to be uh, more pluggable than others, you know, in order to provide this end-to-end -end approach that, yeah. that I mentioned. So we're going to see alliances. We're going to see uh, very similar to what we've seen in the past in other facets of the IT industry. So this open thing, um, it's open type of objective that we need to have the cloud. We need to have them and we need to pursue that path. But, you know, you were talking about a realistic approach for the cloud early on. We, uh, we The users need to understand that they will face such kind of uh, competitive situations where vendors are going to align their forces to provide a preferred stack that is easily deployable, it's tangible, manageable, you know, in their environments. Uh, and I don't think that will always just come from the vendors. You'll start no, uh, to see community clouds, yes, for absolutely. example. Yes, absolutely. Maybe where 
you know, it might be a vendor, but an industry comes together yes. through a vendor. For example, retail, mm -hmm. you know, they would want in the cloud, they would want it to be PCI compliant. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's probably yes. unlikely that a Google, an Amazon, a we'll Azure will, will go that route. You know, if you're working in the National Health Service, yes, if you're a doctor, you would want a certain type of security connectivity to yeah. NHS net. And privacy. Yeah. So we'll start seeing different types and shapes of yes. cloud not only driven by the vendors, but very much by the community, the market, the market. whether that's industry, business, Absolutely. or, I, I, or I social. Yeah. And, and Mindcast is a great example of that because you know a lot of our customers are very, very sensitive about the location of their data and data ownership. So we, we talked about uh, before, you know, if you're a UK law firm, say, you don't want your client data to be subject to the US Patriot Act no. if you're a US-owned company and your data is stored in America. So I think this whole idea about specialist clouds is, 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 is the future because a lot of companies don't want to become uncompliant with their client data and they want their data to remain in, in the UK or Europe. But that's assuming that you can have uh, the uh, access to all the management information that you need to be in charge of uh, the right location for your data. Absolutely. To, today, today uh, we're not going to mention any names today, but today there are service providers you know, that when you ask them, where is my data, they will answer you, sorry, this is confidential. Mm -hmm. As an enterprise, this is, in my mind, totally unacceptable. And we're going to see we're going to see some big corporates putting some weight behind this their um, that strategy of actually telling their customers where their data is hosted to the city. So, for example, um, I think there's a very big three-letter company that's going to start telling 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 their, the people who are buying their services exactly which city their data is located in. So it's not just small providers or growing providers that are going to do this. I think some of the big boys are going to jump in this as well. Oh, yes. It's so important. It's, it's I, I think that's where the, the, you know, there's a big opportunity. Yeah. It's a relative thing size, but yeah, the, the, the outsourcers today will still yeah, have a good business and a growing business Agreed. because large enterprises you know, cannot afford to be put up in one of the Uber clouds, not know where their data is, and security is answered on a white paper. Absolutely. Yeah? The chances of you sending your auditors into their data centre is zero. Yes, yeah. it seems to me that that approach would slightly undermine the whole principle of the cloud, though. You know, if you're going to tell somebody the exact city where your stuff is, and you want something to be really scalable because you're producing a huge amount of new data, say, over the next... Of course, yeah. then you, need to you be can't guarantee it's going to be in one place unless you've taken a load of new servers and which, new premises. Which we do every every day. That I would mean, be normal behaviour? Every day yes. of the week we have deliveries of new servers coming to our offices okay. for well, pre I'm a person. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it's a really interesting point you make because if you're not on a horizontally scalable platform, you're, you're pretty, your options are limited anyway. Yes. Mm. So I think if you've got a horizontally scalable platform, there's no shortage of data centre space mm. in places like the UK, the US, Europe. You can go. You could walk into you know into into London and, and get a hundred cabs mm. this afternoon. Um, so I don't actually think that's a problem. Okay. I think the major problem is compliance. How can you be compliant? How can you ensure that the company mm. you buy your cloud services is compliant today and remains compliant? And I think there are a lot of companies who can make it you know really good. But, but I think you were you were pointing at uh, I think an interesting area which is let's call it integration. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and for a lot of enterprises. Uh, the fact that they are service providers capable to do things for them is very good. <laughs> They're very happy about it. But when it comes down to tying it up with their own IT operation, it's it's a challenge. Uh, you were talking about data management. You know, accessing data repositories through a SaaS layer or under, you know, it's a challenge because data is potentially remote and location becomes uh, you know something important to manage. Uh, agreed, but. What are you going to do you know, with interfacing your IT with uh, the, the service provider platforms? So, for example, yeah, you, you need we, some we kind talked of about process SMS. earlier on. I think a really good example is change control. That's right. Yeah? I have in my enterprise my own change control regime. To try and integrate that into one of the Uber clouds is it's a, a non-starter. You have an outsourcer who are delivering through the cloud. You get all the benefits of mm. elasticity, scalability, reliability. I but I can also connect my process. Absolutely. Right. That's important. Mm. So once you have a way of managing your infrastructure, then you have to look at the reality of the operation itself, how, how it performs. And then suddenly realize that if you don't have the introduction of some new technology on the edge, what we call the cloud edge in general, then getting access to all those benefits is beyond processes is a challenge. 
So you need to, none, in fact, none of the current IT that we have, most, I would say 99% of the IT that we have today in data centers, um, is, is not capable of leveraging the benefit of cloud platforms, of cloud mm -hmm. services. So you need the introduction of some extra technology that can take advantage of whatever it is, an application, uh, a data repository, a data type, a search service, you know. And then you need to adapt. Let's take an example, very, very, very basic. You decide that you're going to use a, a, a SaaS uh, you know, option to protect your data. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to put your data uh, across to a remote service provider. But then your security guy says, well, hang on, all our data sets are uh, checked for viruses. So those, those remote data, no, same thing. It's, it's part of IT. Run your, your virus check on those data sets. Fine. Try to do that on a very large repository that is remote. And then suddenly your process goes mm. down, you know, and what do you do? So there is a level of adaptation that will have to happen mm. inside. And this is where uh, the kind of integrators that you were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, the, the traditional outsourcers and so on, still have, will have a great role to play because they're the one that are going to be able to bridge all those gaps that IT will be facing beyond technology and beyond processes to, to get the glue. You're talking about glue together. It's very much a term that, that fits that situation. It's, it's really about making it working. Mm. And I think that's, you know, I, I've used the expression today is it's, you know, com cloud computing, although important and we'll all start using it, is not the cure to cancer. No, it's absolutely. a small part of the overall IT absolutely. delivery. Absolutely.